and responsive design. So altogether it's going to be a lot of fun and most of it is going to be in our demos. So you're going to get to familiarize yourself with the code better and we'll work along together. Now that we've had a chance to talk about our lesson objectives for today, I just wanted to let you all know that I've got a very special surprise for all of you at the end of the lesson, and this surprise is going to help you land your dream jobs. So stick around and you can find out what surprise I have in store for you. Let's talk portfolios. So it's finally time to do the section I'm sure you are all very excited about. Today we are going to be doing our portfolio page. Now, isn't this nice? Look at how, what a beautiful blank slate we have. So we have our little hamburger menu ready to go up here. But other than that, we've got an empty slate and we are now going to go and put in a portfolio gallery. So the first thing we notice is that I've just gone ahead and put all of this code in so that you're all not doing, you know, watching me do the same thing a million times. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a div class. So we've got our JavaScript here that makes our hamburger menu function. And just underneath that, we are going to say enter. And we are going to say that we want to make a div. So we're going to call this div. And it's going to be a class. And we're going to call that main. So div class main, so that separates it from the rest of our work. And remember to keep your divs in line because this is going to get <laughs> difficult. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so we've made our first div. Now let's go h1. And within h1, we're going to put our heading. So let's say see the world through my eyes. There we go. And we can probably make it easier for everyone to see what I'm doing. There we go. So let's see the world through my eyes. Okay, and we see it pop up over there. Okay, the next thing we want to do is go and create a div content container. So we're going to go div class. And that's going to be our content. And then within here, we are going to go and choose our images. Remembering again, keep these in line. So we are going to say img source is equal to, and we can go and pick our URL. And for this one, I chose, but I was naughty. So this is going to be wedding. Just makes your life infinitely easier later on. So that's going to be wedding. There we go. And our alternate name for this can just be happy. Okay. And then we're going to do some. So now I mentioned previously that you can do in text inline CSS. So what we're going to do here is a bit of inline CSS. So now we've said style, and that's signaling to the HTML that we are now beginning CSS. So within here, we're just going to say that the width is going to be a hundred percent. So within this content section, we're using a hundred percent of our width. Yeah. Let's just see what this looks like. Yeah, so it's looking a little bit funny and it's sitting down here. But don't worry, everything's going to be fine. So we've got image SRC and we should tab that in. And we can ignore our smushed image for now. And then we can give our little image a heading and that is going to be heading to wedding. So don't remember, we haven't got CSS yet, so that's why everything looks awful. So now we're going to create a grid, and within our grid we're going to put another four photos and one more big one. So this is going to be our main photo. So we can comment that in here. Oopsie. So this is going to be main photo. And then over 
over here we are going to now create a grid, so like a table, and within this table is going to be the rest of our photo. So table, grid, smaller, more photos. Okay, so within here we are going to go ahead and now we need to, so our table is made up of columns and rows. So here we're going to go div class is equal to row. Over there. <laughs> and within row we also need to create a div class column and a div you see what I mean? And a div class that is going to be our content. So this is now quite a good example of how it's nested. So these two line up, those two line up, and those two line up. So now within content, so our content is where our image is going to live. So we need to go img. SRC, so image source, and this one I think was a ah, it's architecture, so it was this building, and then we can go alt is equal to colors because it's colorful, and it's equal to so colors and then again we're going to say style and within style we're going to say that the width is 100% and then what we're going to say within here is use our little semicolon like we do within our normal CSS and within here we are going to say that the height is 37% I'll show you why in a moment. Let's save that. And you see everything's looking very strange. It's because we've not yet built this full table. Eek. Okay, so we've got a div class container up here. So we've got quite a lot going on at this point. It's talking now for the sake of talking. There we go. We could also just do that. So I've just tidied this up so that everyone can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so we've now got our architectural buildings one. And then our heading three is going to go in here. And that's going to be architecture. Okay, then the next thing I want to do is go in here. And we are going to say... Okay, so over here, we are going to now go and define these again. So column and content. So we can copy this and paste it in here. So now we put column and content again. And we're going to do essentially the same thing. So img src. We're going to choose. And this one, we can do nature. I like the wolf, so the wolf is happening, and his alt can be wolf, there we go, and then remembering again, now we've said style, so that's allowing us to do some CSS, and then we're going to add in our portrait, so we're going to go in here and go IMG, SRC 
And that's going to be portrait. I'm going to take this happy lady. And we're going to say space alt equals happy. And our, our style is going to be width, which is 100%. And height is equal to 37 percent. So that's a serious habit of mine to close that off with a semicolon. Okay, so now we've got that one done. So we've got our portrait picture up here, and then we just need to give it a heading. So H3. And we can save that, but we're not going to keep looking at this because it's saddening me. And then let's go into the next one, which is our wolf. So we're going to take this again and go in line, and we can copy paste that. And AMG SRC. Ah, no. And that's going to be Wolf. Because he's so cute. Okay, alternate name is going to equal Wolf. And our style is going to equal Width 100%. There we go. And this one's going to be H3. Nature. So at this point, this is our weird little photo gallery. <laughs> Imagine going onto a web designer's portfolio that looked like this. Anyway, such horrors. <laughs> Alrighty, and the last one, we're going to do another one of these big images. So we've now got, oh, and then food. How could I forget food? So let's go here. Let's just tab you along. There we go. The last one. And hopefully you all know now, IMG, SRC. This one's going to be our food picture. we And the alternate name is equal to food. <laughs> and the style is simply going to be width 100%. And last but not least, our last main heading one. So we've got food now. So after food, we need to then close this div. We have a few divs to close actually. So let's have a look. So we've got this opening div and we have no closing div. So let's go in line with him. Go div. We've got this div and no closing div. So guess what? Another div. <laughs> And we've got one more. Whoopsie. So we've got div div. Div div. So then here we need div div. <laughs> div div. And div div. Okay, so these are all little V's. <laughs> one we want to add in is going to be another one of our nice heading ones. So this is just going to say div class content again. And within this one we are just going to have <laughs> IMG 
ہی پٹا میں سوس اینڈ آلاک ویڈنگ فائٹر Column. 
and we're gonna set this to float left and we're gonna make the width 50% so 50% of our little surface area okay so we can see now that these have moved so our pictures are there we just can't see them yet <laughs> okay so then we've got 50 next we've got dot row and this is going to be then dot row after the next thing we want to do is dot content and within dot content we want to just set our background color so let's go background color and this can just be white I think that'll look nice and we can just make our padding 15 pixels Okay, so when you refresh, this is what our site's looking like at the moment, so that's looking a lot better. But we can still make it even better. So let's go in here, and we're going to go dot content. Ooh, not what I said there. So dot content, and then we need to set a background color, so let's go background color and that can be white and we can add in padding which can be 15 pixels I think that's looking a bit better we haven't got a label here let's quickly fix that there we go styling there we go okay I'm back into the CSS we've just done our content and now we're going to add in what we spoke about earlier which is some responsive design so how we can do that is we're going to go add media screen and we're going to send the, set the max width to 900 pixels. We're going to do that. There we go. Let me just bring this down a bit. Okay, and then we're going to set this to column. And the width is going to be 50%. one we're also going to do is going to be so so essentially what this is going to do is it's going to make it two column layout here instead of four so we can see here we've got two columns instead of four but we're actually going to now add in another one that's going to fix this so let's go in here go add to media screen and max max width is going to be 600 pixels there we go and open here and then it's going to be dot column again and within here we're going to set that width to 100 pixels 100% sorry and let's see what this does okay so this is so this is looking quite nice at this point I think let's just have a look here if we're going to full screen okay so these two are looking a little bit squished so let's go and fix that so if we go back into our HTML, here we've got 37, let's change that to 50, 
and let's change this height to 50 as well, see if that improves it. Okay, it's a little bit stretchier here, but the full screen image looks a lot better. I think that's got quite a nice effect. I think one thing we do need to go and fix is our heading threes. Let's do that quickly. So it's in CSS, we can go further to the top. So let's go H3, and we can change that font size, and let's make it 30 pixels. See if that improves anything. So we've got wedding. What was wedding? Wedding was a heading two. Let's make it a heading three. Then we can have a bit of uniformity. There we go. So see the world through my eyes. Wedding, architecture, portrait. Maybe portraits. Portraits. Nature, food, styling, and then we've got the end of our little marriage story here. So I think that looks very cute. And quite it's a very simple design, but it's giving you, you know, it's allowing you to focus on the elements that we're actually, that we want people to focus on. So I think that's quite nice, and it's quite a nice basic introduction to portfolios. So as a reward for completing Lesson 7, I'm going to show you how to get your CV just right. So let's go and talk about the different sections and what key things you should be considering when you're putting information into your CV. The first thing is your personal profile. Now when you are writing the short paragraph for your CV, the things you want to consider are who are you and who is the person that you want to show off to a company that you are. What are the traits that you have that you would like to communicate to them? And what do you have to offer? What sets you apart from other candidates other than it just coming down to your basic skill sets or your advanced skills? What makes you unique? And lastly, what are your goals? So where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do you want your career to go? You want to make this clear to potential employers because they get to see where you could grow within their company and that you also have set high goals for yourself in the future. Very important thing to consider is tailor your CV to the specific job you are applying for. So you may be looking for web design jobs, but one particular company may interest you and it's important to go and read their job descriptions that they've said and take out keywords that you can then put into your CV so that when they're reading it, they the whole time they're just going, oh my word, this person knows X, Y, and Z that we've asked for in our job advert. The next thing people struggle with is personal information. So what do you need to tell potential employers? Well, the key things will obviously be your full name, your location and whether you're willing to move for your job, an email address and a contact number. A lot of companies would prefer to call you so they can get familiar with your tone of voice and also for what kind of person you are because we all sound very different in the language we use in an email in comparison to how we speak on the phone and with general communication. And lastly, include a link to your LinkedIn profile because that just allows potential employers to go and see who you are connected to in the industry and also see any stories that you've shared and, any, and a more in-depth look into things they would find on your CV. Then when talking about your education, you want to ensure that you've got the institute's name, the qualification, the name of the qualification, the level, and the year. So if you've got a master's degree, you're going to want to say that. If you've got a diploma, and then it's also very important to specify the year because a degree in IT 10 years ago is not going to be as relevant as a degree in IT last year. And then any special achievements. So if you want any awards during this time, you definitely want to show that off. You've worked hard, and it just shows that you're willing to put in more effort than just getting the diploma or degree. And then also make special mention of any modules that you've done that are specific to the job you are applying for. So if you did web design in a university, then you definitely want to mention that if you are applying for a web design job. Then where a lot of people get lost and make a few mistakes is when mentioning your key skills. Now within here you don't want to go and write down every skill you've ever learned because people are going to get bored and stop reading it. So you want to make sure that you're using keywords 
then you want to limit your list because there's no point putting skills in there that aren't relevant to the job into your key skills list. You need to make sure they are relevant. Then again, read the job advertisement. Everything you need to know is in there. They have told you exactly what they want. You need to just let them know that you have all those skills or hopefully most of the skills that they're looking for and just show them that you've done your research on them as well. Let them know that you've gone and looked at their website. And lastly, don't forget soft skills. It's never a bad thing to mention that you're an, a very good listener or that you work well in a team. You don't want all of your skills to be things that you're qualified in because a lot of the skills we have can't be taught and we learn them from our cultural upbringing or our friends and family and they're things that a lot of other applicants may not have. And the last thing where I see a lot of mistakes is check your CV for the thousandth time before you send it. So your checklist before you apply. Run a spell check. It takes two minutes and it will avoid any embarrassing mistakes in your spelling. Make sure that your formatting is consistent. There is nothing worse than a CV that starts in one font and ends in another. Then also make sure that in your footer you've said when you last updated your CV. Because if someone's getting your CV from 2016, you want them to know that they can email you and ask you for an updated version. Check your references, make sure that the numbers haven't changed, and also it's never a bad idea to let previous employers know that you are going to be putting them on your reference list. This way they're not caught unprepared if they do get a phone call. And last, and I'm going to drill this into your heads, read the job description one more time. And also a nice thing to do is to ask a friend or family member who have got experience in a similar industry just to read your CV as well. I think with all the tips and tricks you've learnt in today's lesson, in combination with the amazing digital CVs that you're all building, I think we should have no problem getting you all a corner office in no time. Finally, when you finish your four module course, because let's remember this is really only the beginning of your journey, whatever your goals are, you will then be able to enjoy your passion, which I always find the most important, you'll be able to share your work and be proud of your websites, you'll become even more creative and see more possibilities. You can showcase your hobbies and interests. I know a lot of people who've built websites around baking or photography, um, anything if you'd like, cars and you fix up cars, you could build your own website there. There's really no limit to what you can showcase on a website. And set your web designs apart from the rest with your own personal approach. We're all such different individuals and that's what makes this world amazing. And it's always fantastic when someone takes a bit of themselves and put the, puts it into their work. Next, because it pays the rent, increase your earning potential. Perhaps you have a greater ambition with your web designs now and after this course. You could supplement your, your income with some side work within web design. You could do part-time work as a web designer. You could earn back money from your designs. And you can offer a retainer for ongoing design work. And this is basically when you do design work for a company and they pay you a monthly fee. And then you keep their website looking amazing and update photos and their designs as they need it. And then you can also start a web design blog and monetize it. And then third, you could start a new career. So become a full-time web designer, which is just the dream. You could link your work in web design to fashion, journalism, nature, food, whatever area you want to succeed in. Every company out there at the moment has got a website and they all need help. You can build a portfolio like I've shown you to do now in module one. You could basically live, work and breathe web design, which sounds like heaven to me. <laughs> and maybe you could be like me and teach web design. But... There's always a but. If you drop out, nothing's going to change. So this is what happens if you decide to finish here. No more spending time with me and learning how to web design. But hopefully you're going to keep going and keep seeing changes. If we learn one new thing every lesson that you can go and try and that improves your web design,